Today we are talking about how to mount a mini split condenser on the outside of your house or garage or wherever you happen to be installing your mini split. So this is the exact one that we're going to be installing today. Uh, so I'll be showing you how to get this kit mounted properly and get everything set up the way it should be. But I also want to talk through several different points for how you know where you should mount your mini split and also just talk about the option of placing it on the ground versus placing it or hanging it on the wall. The first thing to keep in mind that's a major factor is whether or not you have a mini split that is an air conditioner only or if you have one that is a heat pump. Now the vast majority of mini splits these days are going to be heat pumps. So with it being a heat pump you have to take into consideration any snow accumulation and also condensation that's going to be coming off of this outside unit. So should you mount it on the wall or should you mount it on the ground? It's kind of a common question. I would say mount it on the wall if at all possible, but these are the considerations you need to take into account. If you decide to set your mini split unit on the ground, uh, you just have to be aware that if the grade has been changed at all uh, anytime recently, you're going to have to deal with settling. And oftentimes you'll drive by and see it on houses where the condensing unit, whether it be a mini split or a standard air conditioner, will have sunken down and will be leaning, typically leaning towards the house. So that issue of settling is totally avoided by hanging it on the wall of the structure instead of setting it on the ground. The other thing I really like about mounting it on the wall is that it tends to be more stable. So when you get this bracket here, we're gonna get, have the bracket anchored really well to the wall and then the unit will be anchored to the bracket. Now that's nice because sometimes when you have one that's sitting on the ground, uh, usually it doesn't get anchored very well. And even if you do anchor it, you're anchoring it to like these blocks or this little pad, typically. Obviously it's different if you have like a concrete slab and you like bolt it down to that, that's fantastic. But most of the time it's gonna just kind of be sitting there. And I've seen it before when we had a pretty big windstorm that came through our area where there were air conditioners and things that just got flipped over all over the place, including mini splits. So you wanna have it anchored down really well and that's naturally gonna happen when you anchor it to the side of the building with one of these kits. So if you have a unit that is a heat pump in addition to it being an air conditioner, you're going to have to anticipate this outside condenser running in the winter time. So we want to keep that bottom of the unit about six inches above the anticipated snow level if at all possible. So here in southwest Minnesota, our average snow fall accumulation during the winter is around 36 inches. So if we go 36 plus another six inches, that gives us about 42 inches above the ground where we want the bottom of our unit to be. Now obviously that's pretty high and depending on where you have your unit mounted, that can be kind of unsightly, especially if it were like on the front of your house. So if that is the case and you're, you know that you're gonna have to move some snow anyway, you can mount it down lower, but if you're in like a northern climate like Minnesota, I'd recommend trying to keep it at least 16 to 24 inches off of the ground. If you're one of those smart people that lives in a warmer climate, obviously, you know, mounting it a foot off the ground is probably all you're gonna need to do. Now, if you have the option of putting your outdoor condenser in multiple different areas, you're gonna want to find the spot that is going to be the least sunny. You don't wanna place your condensing unit in direct sun if at all possible. So placing it on the north side of the building like we're gonna be doing is definitely one of the better options that you'll have if at all possible. Basically you wanna keep that condensing unit out of the sun because not only do, does the ultraviolet uh, cause fading and damage to the plastics of the unit, but it will also mess with the temperature sensors that are typically integrated into that condensing unit. So you'll get the best read on your ambient temperature if it is out of the sun. So we're gonna place ours on the north side of the building. The other thing to pay attention to is, you know, not putting it around a lot of trees or shrubs that are gonna block any airflow coming into the unit. A couple other things about mounting it to a wall are that you need to be aware of the fact that there's gonna be some sound transfer. Basically, you have a compressor and fan motor in that outside condensing unit that creates some vibration. So when you have brackets that are attached to the framing of the building, uh, that is going to allow that compressor vibration to transfer through the wall at least a little bit. Now they have some vibration absorbing pads that 
kind of isolate the unit from the mount a tiny bit, but you're still gonna have some level of sound transfer. You will also want to ensure that the wall that you are anchoring the unit to is strong enough to support the weight of the mini split condenser. The wall that we're gonna be anchoring this to is just a standard framed wall. As you can see, it's actually a double studded wall now because I added spray foam here. So this is uh, one of our main framing members or studs and right over here is another one. So that's what we're gonna wanna make sure of is be absolutely certain that we get our anchors to go into the actual framing and not just into the outer layer of sheathing. You really wanna get some lag bolts set into these actual studs and not rely on the OSB or plywood or just one by material that is on the outside of most structures. Now, if you're anchoring to a concrete or brick structure, you're gonna be much better to go. You just have to make sure you get your cement anchors in there properly so that they're not gonna pull out. All right, well, that's enough about that. Let's go ahead and get this uh, kit here mounted to the side of my garage so we're ready to set our condenser on it. If you guys are looking for a mini split, I will link to this Cooper and Hunter unit in the description right underneath this video, and you guys can check that out. I'll also link to a couple of different sizes and options that they have that are available. All right, let's go get this thing hung on the wall. As we previously discussed, we're gonna be mounting this unit about 42 inches off of the ground. Now right here on the wall, I do have my studs marked out. So I have a stud right there and a stud right here. But unfortunately, this bracket doesn't have holes drilled in the proper places. So I'm gonna to have to mark and drill a couple of additional holes in this bracket. It's nice with the way this one is designed because these are independent of this back bracket. So these just slide to wherever you need them to be. So we're going to be able to just take these off while we mount this bracket in place. I'll just mark the height of it here so we know approximately how high we want it to be. For those of you who care to know, I'm just adding this one little scrap piece of steel here. That way once I do put steel siding on the rest of my garage, I won't have to pull my unit off in order to get a piece of siding behind there. So I'll mark my holes where I need to drill new holes in the brackets. I'm gonna be using these big old Torx lags that should go well into that framing member. So we'll have a very good anchor point on either side. This particular bracket even has a level built into it, which is kind of handy. I'm gonna still double check it with an actual level because I don't really trust it, but it at least gives you a general idea of what's going on. I'm gonna call it good with those two Torx lags. Those things are very substantial, so I have no concerns about this ever coming loose. But if you wanted to, we could add additional uh, screws or anchors in along here, but we're, we wouldn't have any other spots to put anchors directly into the studs. So if we were to add any anchors, it would just be going into this sheathing right here, which isn't really gonna make that much difference. And then our brackets are gonna go on here just like this. But before we do that, we've got a couple of standoff adjustment pieces that will hold this out a certain distance. So let's go ahead and put those in here. They just thread into the bottom edge of this bracket, like so. And then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. I think we're actually pretty close right there. Once you have these in the open position, you wanna lock them in place using the included bolt that prevents this from being folded up towards the building and the same thing for the other side. Hit that mom head that when you get video, I uh, again need to go and hide. Oh, no, it's okay. You don't have to right now. Pretty soon it's gonna be lunchtime and then we'll all go inside, okay? I'm getting more, but wait, I was playing out here. Really? All right, that's enough. All right, you can go play with the other kids, okay? Whoa, that's perfect. I can do it, Dad. 
You can? Yeah. Wow. All right, we're gonna tip it uh, back towards us. Ready? Got it, yeah. I can, I can do it by myself. No, and probably not by yourself, but thanks for helping here. Let me clip this on your shirt so that they can hear you. You sit there. You each walk on the side and put your hand on it. Up. No. Here's the mic. Thank you. Always make sure that you have at least two people for lifting the unit up into place because they can be a little bit heavy. They made this one too heavy. The boss just came out to check out the progress. Oh, me, huh? Yes, that would be you. What do you guys think? Would that count as a near-death experience, or was that fine? I know the mini split nearly died. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to mention is that you do not want to place your mini split on a point where you're going to have precipitation coming down directly on top of the mini split. So if we were mounting that on this wall over here, we would be right in line with all the snow and ice and water that's gonna be coming off of this roof. So you always want to choose a spot where it's not gonna have continual direct rain being dumped down on top of the unit. For each one of the feet where it comes in contact with the mounting bracket, I used a little rubber spacer that you typically would see underneath a refrigeration compressor or an air conditioning compressor. So I have a little bit of isolation here for the purposes of vibration, but this thing could be bolted directly to here. It just would have transferred a tiny bit more sound through and into the building. Honestly, I wasn't super impressed with this particular bracket design. It seems like it could have been a little bit heavier duty for the size unit that we have here today. But according to the manufacturer, this bracket is the correct one to use. You could obviously make your own bracket out of some angle iron and weld something together that would probably be heavier duty than this, but it is kind of nice just having a kit that is ready to go straight out of the box and you can just assemble it and be done with it. Again, links in the description to a few different mini splits that are done by Cooper and Hunter, the same as the one that I'm installing here today, as well as some different bracket options that they have available. So we are ready to proceed to the next step of installing this particular mini split unit. If you wanna see that next video, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell to be notified about when that video goes live. If you're watching this in the future though, I will link that video right here on the screen. Otherwise, this video right up here is the one that YouTube thinks that you would like to watch. All right, we'll see you in one of those videos right there in just a few seconds. Thanks for watching. It's really hot outside. 
You'd think in Minnesota we would like have a really nice and cool climate all the time, but that's not the case. We get this like super hot, humid weather in the summer, and then we get the super cold, nasty weather in the winter.